All right, friends. Hello. Happy Thursday. I love to nickname days of the week. It helps me stay fired up and energized. So I have Magnificent Monday, Taco Tuesday. I mean, you can't go wrong with tacos on Tuesday. Why not Wednesday? Why not give it a shot? Why not try something new? Thursday for me is Thoughtful Thursday. And then Friday is Finish Strong Friday, where I look at my weekly wins, I celebrate, and I use that momentum to inspire the strategic planning of the week ahead so that when I block schedule my time, I'm staying committed and aligned to my uniqueness and my mission. And so with that, uniqueness and mission is kind of the theme we're going to talk about today, but most importantly, we're going to talk about it through the lens of our thinking. I love Ed Milet and watching him just grow and stay committed to his uniqueness and his mission. And as he does so, the rewards and the accolades are come, come right alongside that. And that's what often we look at and we want, right? We see someone on a stage. We see someone in our scroll. We see someone doing something they love, inventing something, creating something, writing that book. Right now, I'm kind of struggling with my book. So that's top of mind. I got to get it to my production team tomorrow. And I'm like, I just can't pull the trigger to say it's good enough for print. It is super difficult for me. But I see other authors doing it and I get inspired, right? And in Ed Milet this week was interviewing Gary John Bishop. And Gary John Bishop said, "Your you live your adult life either as a reflection of your childhood or in reaction to it. And I thought, wow, that's kind of true. And then he talked about how the past wins one way or another, that there's this echo from our childhood that's playing out in our lives. And he said, you are not shaped by the past itself. You're shaped by what you said about it. It's not the events of our lives that define us. It's the meaning you attach to the event. And that, my friends, made me think of my favorite tool on the planet to think, which is called the ladder of inference. And I am going to share my screen with you, please. All right, present mode, here we go. Present full screen, present. Now I've got to share my screen with you. All the tech, here we go. Thank you for your patience, here we go. All right, I'm super excited. This tool has been the game changer for me. It's helped me in relationships when I have a very contentious fight with a gentleman I was dating. This ladder helped us see each other's perspective in literally seconds and dissolved that disagreement in minutes. It's what I use with my daughter when I'm trying to teach her how to think. The world's most influential people do three things. In High Performance Leadership Academy, we study those three things, we practice and prepare for those three things, and we execute to increase our leadership and influence in the world. One of those things is the most influential people teach us how to think. So I'm going to role model that today because extraordinary thinking leads to extraordinary success in your life. So we're going to climb this ladder of inference together. On the right, you'll see a ladder that I've created um, way back in 2000, 2001. I was partnering with MIT and some leaders in systems thinking and dynamic modeling. And we took Peter Senge's ladder of inference, which had a zillion rungs that were hard to remember. And we, our charge was to make it accessible to children, elementary age children specifically. So we created a four rung ladder. As I adapted that for adult learners, I made it into five. So what you see here on the right is the ladder of inference that we're going to talk through. It begins with an experience. So I'm going to talk specifically to those of you who have a business idea and think, I might want to run my own business. I think I'm ready for that courageous career move in the direction of my dreams. I might, you might be someone who's thinking about building your side hustle and earning a little extra. Strained economies always show the strongest. And so I know I'm talking to the strongest. Those who are thinking about doing something a little differently, earning a little extra income, making some wise moves while everyone else is losing their mind and falling apart. 
that's not who you, who my people are. They're not over there. They're not stuck in the mediocre middle. My people are in the top 10%, top 5%, top 3%, top 2%, top 1%. They are always striving for continuous improvement. It's one of the habits of mind of the most extraordinary people. You're my people. That's what we do. So I want to share this idea with you of how we climb this ladder subconsciously without knowing. And when we bring it into conscious thought, we can really evaluate what's holding us back and shed that and choose not to believe that anymore. So we're going to be talking heavily about beliefs, but I'm going to start with an experience. So when I was first thinking about running my business, I've been dreaming of doing this for seven years, and now I get to live that dream. And I'm so excited. And I hope that when I work with you, it doesn't take you seven years, right? I've built the program where you will get done in four months, what took me three years, and then that will be your launch pad into success. So for me, in my experience, I had so many business ideas. I literally had more ideas than I had time for. So I would write them all down. And then I love a good spreadsheet. So I organized them into a five column sheet with aligned actions that it would take to achieve that goal. I had some ridiculous things on this list, my friends. I had things like an aromatherapy blend because I loved studying certain essential oils and how they built your confidence. I used to put essential oils on the bottoms of my feet and sleep with socks on, on the days prior to having to advise the Senate or the White House or the Gates Foundation, because those moments made me sweat a little. They made me shake a little, I was nervous. And so I was really working on how could I cultivate confidence in my life? Then you fast forward a little bit and I also had these Alex and Ani bracelets that I used to love. One of them had a tree of life. And as I put that on my wrist, I intentionally told myself root to rise. And that meant root into who you are to rise tall and strong amidst the adversity that I was facing when I was founding downtown Denver's first elementary school. I had a massive bully who would tell me educators are a dime a dozen you're easily replaceable, you're lucky to have this job. And so it started to rattle my tree a little bit. And so I would tell myself as I put on that bracelet, root to rise, anytime I had to meet with that individual, I placed that bracelet on my wrist. I had another Alex Nani bracelet that has a lotus flower on it. And it, I would wear that one on the days where life was muddy. And I would tell myself, because a lotus flower grows in the mud and they're beautiful. If you've never seen one, Google lotus flower. Oh my gosh, I think there's such beautiful works of mother nature. As I would place that on my wrist, I would tell myself from the mud, a masterpiece is made. And so if you're in the messy, muddy part of life right now, I'm standing there with you. I'm in the aftermath of a massive, aggressive cancer, surviving that and changing the trajectory of my disease with food and biobehavioral choices, more spreadsheets and analysis paralysis from yours truly. Um, that came two days after being laid off and let go from a job I loved, which happened five months after tripling my mortgage and moving out to five acres in the country and putting a horse in the yard for my daughter. So if you're feeling a little bit, bit stuck in the mud right now, honey, I understand. Let's get clear on how we think about these things because the narrative we carry forward has a tremendous effect on our lives and how we form our beliefs which as you're going to see through this ladder informs what we think about and what we do. And we are the culmination of our thoughts and actions. Our life is a reflection of our thoughts and actions. So we have to get our mindset right. But I guarantee you, you've never been shown this tool before, right? So there's a lot of tools out there that you've never been taught. Our educational system needs to teach these things. I think we need to be taught about money management and wealth acquisition, relationships and boundaries and thinking, how to use this organ that is in control of our destiny. And we don't spend a lot of time in our academic careers on those things. And we exit into the world and we get busy working and earning all the bullets on our resumes and no one ever teaches us this. So I'm here to put a stop to that. We're gonna learn how to think together and we're gonna master our mindset. So I had all these ideas and then my perspective, think spectator sports, spectacles, that's how you see the world. So we put on these glasses each day. And if you do this to yourself, literally humor me and do it with me. 
Can you see, like, I can't see that there's a French door over here when I'm doing this. Our perspectives are the blinders that we place on ourselves. It's the lens we see the world through. And it's activated through our schema, through our background knowledge, through previous experiences and exposure to environments. That's why our environment is mission critical. So in our perspective, I see many opportunities. I see people earning money, doing what they love, making a difference in people's lives. And I decide I want in on that. I'm going to skip the belief run for right now because this usually we don't go, what do I believe is true? We don't do that. Our human tendency, our psychology is to go right from experience. We take an experience in life. We, we self-select data and what we see. I'm an optimist, so I see the good in most circumstances. I've trained myself to be that way because optimists achieve more and I like achieving things. So I self-select my perspective. And then I start thinking, generating thoughts based on that place. And I think to myself, I'm going to get started on that. And you know what I do next? I start scrolling in search of what I need to learn. What class could I take? What could I enroll in? What, 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 what are you going to do? What is my website going to say? What is my logo going to look like? We focus on what, and it's because all our lives we've been asked, what do you want to be when you grow up? What do you do for a living? I'm writing my book on this topic and that we need to make a critical shift from what to who, because what will be always changing. The World Economic Forum forecasts 96 million new jobs by 2025. Friends, we're on the horizon of that. 95 million new jobs and you think you have to figure out what you're going to do right now? I would argue you need to figure out who you are, because in a world that is constantly telling you sending messages of negativity, you're going to become that and you will be pulled into the mediocre middle if you allow that to happen. We have to control our mindset. We have to control our mental models and ways of seeing the world, that perspective lens. We have to ask ourselves about our beliefs. So that is the most critical question is what do I, what do these thoughts and actions reflect about my beliefs? So in the example I gave, where, let me go back, I'm going to get started. I'm super excited. And then I'm going to go find who has the answer to what I need to do. If I slow down underneath that is the belief that the answer lies outside of who I am. That it's the belief that I'm not blank enough. I'm not intelligent enough. I don't know enough. I don't have enough followers. My email list isn't long enough. I'm not pretty enough, smart enough, well positioned enough. We make up these stories that run through that thought and action loop and they're based on our beliefs. I don't know, that person can do it, but I don't know if I can, right? And sometimes we even make up like, well, they're willing to do that, but you know, money's evil. I don't want to have too much of it. You know what they say, mo money, mo problems. I'm going to tell you right now, life is going to bring you problems no matter how much money you have. I've been broke as a joke as an educator living in my Honda Civic. And I've been able to manage great wealth and live in a 5,800 square foot home on five acres with horses in the yard, viewing the Rocky Mountains out of every window, even the one from my toilet. And I'm here to tell you that no matter how much money I had, I still had problems. So we can guarantee that life will bring us problems. And we've got to control our mind and watch that inner narrative. When we tell ourselves these stories we and we push pause and you climb the ladder, I want you to be journaling like this. My journal literally has E and I write down what I've experienced. P and I write down what I'm seeing. B, I skip that one. T, what am I thinking about right now, right? Like I'm in the middle of a massive real estate transaction. And it turns out we had this big hail storm and I had filed an insurance claim and I left the claim open. I didn't know what I was supposed to do with it. I haven't even cashed the check. I was busy navigating the end of my cancer journey while all that was happening. And it ended up in the desk drawer in the bottom of a pile. And now I'm navigating that. My thought loop could be, I wonder what's going to happen if, 
I wonder if this happens, then this might happen next. Oh my goodness, that can't happen. What if this happens? Oh, and then my boyfriend said this and that sent me into a tailspin. And now I'm wondering, is this the right course of action or is that the right course of action? I don't know. Did he really mean what he said? I can't go along with that. Do you see how fast it happens? Our thoughts, Daniel Kahneman, who's a behavioral economist who was awarded um, a Nobel uh, laureate award in, uh, I believe it was behavioral economics. Um, but if you Google Daniel Kahneman, thinking fast and thinking slow, you'll find him. He has, um, he calls that fast thinking, right? And it's our automatic thoughts. Those kinds of thoughts are great. They help us avoid when someone cuts us off and we do that quick automatic thought and get out of the way and avoid that collision. It's great. It has served us. In times, if you go back in the evolution of humankind, times when there were a lot fewer of us on the planet and life was a lot dicier. Fast thinking is what helped us survive. Fast thinking is what has led to what psychologists call ants, automatic negative thoughts. If you don't use a ladder or some type of thinking tool to slow down your thoughts, you will conform to the patterns of this world. And I'm here to tell you, we are designed to live a Romans 12 to life. If you're like me and hadn't picked up a Bible in a long time, let me tell you what it says. Because this verse was brought to me in a divine moment where I was laying in bed with my eye pillow on, manifesting, praying, embracing something bigger. And the words Romans 12 to came to me. And I had to Google, what does Romans 12, 2 say? Get this. It is your guide for life, for happiness, for success, for meaning, fulfillment, peace, joy, all the things you want. Do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Ooh, I feel you, God. I get this right leg tingle every once in a while when I'm playing this game with God of creating my business, creating my life, and it's full trust and surrender. It is scary to me because I like strategic spreadsheets and plans, and I'm learning to have those and embrace this or something better. God, I'm open. I want to use my uniqueness and be on mission. And my mission is to help you escape the mediocre middle and live in the life that you were designed to live in. Do not conform to the patterns of this world. The patterns of this world, if you look at the data, will show that you're going to be depressed and anxious obese, financially pretty screwed. Like, let's just be real. The majority of people don't own their home outright, are in tons of debt, have buried in financial stress, don't have a retirement plan. Like, if you hear the patterns of this world, you should be going, pump the brakes. I don't want to do that with my life. Yet, what do we do each and every day when we wake up? We fumble out of bed, we hurry and hustle, and we allow the patterns of this world to shape our beliefs, our thoughts, and actions. Think about it. Ladies, you probably have a belief that you're unattractive somewhere in your consciousness. Why is that? Because we see magazines and photoshopped versions of women, and we tell ourselves that's what we're supposed to look like. I'm struggling with that massively after breast cancer. My breasts aren't as pretty and perky and lovely as they used to be. And it's bothering me, right? And it's because I have a belief that they have to look a certain way to be attractive. And so that informs my thoughts every day when I look in the mirror or when I bend over and put lotion on my legs and I see how they hang, right? So my thoughts then go to a negative place of I'm not pretty enough. I'm not sexy enough. What is my actions then? My vibration, my energy dims a little. So we've got to reform those beliefs. And I have to look at, it's not that my breasts are unattractive. My breasts battled cancer. Oh yeah, baby. My thoughts then go, those are some strong tatas. And my action aligns vibrationally with abundance, with I am enough, with I cannot allow those beliefs and thoughts to derail me in my day. I wouldn't be able to show up for you with energy if I couldn't reframe my thinking to reclaim my life. 
I've told myself that phrase over and over, Jay, you're reframing your thinking to reclaim your life. It's what you got to do right now. Reframe your thinking. Anytime you see those ants, automatic negative thoughts, reframe your thinking, reclaim your life. You're programming your mind all the time. And if you're not, someone else is. So when we're caught in that thought and action loop where we're thinking and acting and thinking and acting and moving at the speed of light, we are going to end up in one of the five conditions that describe how we live our lives. We're going to end up caged or in our comfort zone. Yet what we really want is to live fully charged. And then for those who've lived charged for a long time and are going, is this all there is? You might be a little in the curious zone wondering, is there more? There has to be more to life than wealth acquisition, right? Like, yeah, I got the one and a half million dollar house. Yeah, Porsche's in the garage. Yeah, horses in the yard. Do I just keep hurrying and hustling? This is what I'm supposed to do like for the next 20 years? You might be in that curious space. That's where I was just recently. Cancer diagnosis made me real curious about whether that was worth it. And if you Google 3D and 5D living, you'll find that you can live very charged in a 3D life. And as you approach curiosity, you'll live in the fourth dimension. And then as you evolve in your consciousness, you'll move into the fifth dimension. And that to me is what's fascinating me right now about how I'm living my life and how I'm using my career to fund my lifestyle ambition so that I can slow down, be more present with my daughter, enjoy traveling all over the United States to horse shows with her and having her, seeing her recognize that you can do anything you want in your life. Don't let your parents, your teachers, your professors, your supervisors determine your worth. That's what we do. I did it. I thought, oh, I got another A. And the A for the day became my motto. And then that A for the day translated into college and it translated into work. And a lot of my worth was determined by that. Yet we can claim that for ourselves. There's another way we can determine. I'm going to be the greatest of all time. You'll see me. I love studying Tom Brady. That man is a beast. He manages every morsel he puts in his mouth so that he can perform on the field. That's some dedication. That's what earns my respect. That's what I pay attention to. I align myself with the best, not the rest right? Because again, if you're looking at that mediocre middle and what everybody else is doing, guess where you're going to fall? That's where you're going to end up. If you look at people who are extraordinary, who are achieving success on their terms, who are happy, healthy, less stressed than their peers, that's how you know you're looking at a high performer. That's the definition of high performers. They consistently outperform while maintaining their health and well-being and quality relationships. I started studying that research because I was a peak performer. I'd scale that peak. Boy, give me some extrinsic motivation and reward. Dangle the carrot and I'll chase it. And then I would plummet to the valley to, be, to recover. Scale the peak, plummet to the valley, scale the peak, plummet to the valley. Eventually that got old. And along the way, I gained a lot of weight doing that. I lost quality time with the ones that I love the most doing that. I came home from work frazzled and my loved ones got the rest of me, not the best of me. So I, when I came across this body of research on high performance in like 2017, 18, I immersed myself in it. I started studying it. I built one habit at a time. Now my life is optimized. Can't nobody break my stride. Can't nobody hold me down. Oh no, because I know another way. And I took the time to invest in my learning. And that's what I want to invite you to do. How do you rewrite the narratives? You're climbing that ladder all day, not even knowing it. It's probably why you're exhausted. And we have to begin with our beliefs. So I want to invite you to join me in High Performance Leadership Academy as a founding member. The program's kicking off January 8th. What you need, if you, this is your checklist, you can do this checklist with me or you can do this checklist on your own, but you have to follow this checklist. You need knowledge. When you know better, you do better. You need support. You're not designed to do it alone. For those of us who are strong, independent, successful women, we've done a lot on our own. It took cancer to teach me that life is better when we ask for help and when we give others the opportunity to share their knowledge and expertise with us too.
I had a woman who reached out and during my cancer journey, I was new to living in this area. And she said, can I drive you to your MRI? I said, honey, I drove my baby girl home from the hospital by myself. I think I'll be fine. And she said, you'll really, it will make a difference just knowing someone's there. And I can't tell you how much as I was laying in that MRI machine, literally like it was like a rectangle across my breasts with a bar in the middle. So one boob dangling down each hole and I'm hanging with my arms in the air, like I'm superwoman and the noise is loud and I'm waiting for the IV to trickle this icy tingle that they told me I would have through my veins so that they could explore how, how it flowed through my lymphatic system. As I laid there, it meant the world to me that she was in that waiting room, someone who barely knew me. That's when we're at our best, my friends. So we need to be in a community of support. I was able to, because she did that for me, I turned around and did that for another woman who also told me, no, I'll be fine. I said, no, you won't. It's going to make a big difference that I'm out there waiting. Someone did that for me. Please let me do that for you. We need to learn how to ask for help in healthy ways and to receive it and to reciprocate. And that's the goodness of the world. So support, that leads to the next one, connection. You need to be known. Your needs need to be heard, not suffocated. You need continuous coaching. You need time with other game changers because you will be pulled into the mediocre middle. It happens to all of us. You also need to be seen and celebrated. You need a strategic plan and someone walking alongside you to put it in motion. Don't expect that you're going to be extraordinary by yourself. Every extraordinary human has coaches in their life, has a team supporting their success. Look at professional athletes, right? I love studying professional athletes and their behaviors, especially during the season leading to the Super Bowl. You want to know how many coaches those individuals have? They have coaches on their decorum, coaches on their attire, coaches on their field presence, coaches on offensive and defensive coaches. They got so many coaches and you're sitting here thinking you've got to succeed all by yourself. Not true, my friends. And you also have to learn how to design the day like the greatest of all time. They use their minutes differently. Managing those minutes, maximizing those minutes is mission critical. So what I've built is a special invitation for you to join me. You will receive everything you need to succeed private course membership area where you can access every training. You can rewatch and you'll have lifetime access. You'll have a live exclusive community and group support. I'll be the leader taking us through trainings in that community, engaging in Q&A. This is all done live so we can interact together with each other. Weekly live group coaching, that's a secondary opportunity to go through the 12 research-based high performance frameworks during our time together and learn each and every one of the high performance habits so that you can adopt and embrace those on your time applied to your life and your circumstance. Um, access to the boardroom. The boardroom is a sacred place where we come together on Zoom. It's like we work, if you're familiar with collaborative workspaces, but on Zoom. So we turn our cameras on, we smile for each other, we cheer each other on, we share what's happening in our businesses and what we're working on. Then we turn our cameras off, microphones off, and we work. And you will be surprised how much you achieve when you have just the knowledge that someone else is working alongside you, is in the struggle, is in the mud, is create in that messy middle, creating their masterpiece. And then at the end of our allocated hour and a half, we regroup and report what we did. That level of accountability is what you need to move forward faster. I want you achieving a year's goals in six months time. You know why? What I've learned built me insane career success was that I never lived the same year again and again and again. And when I coach leaders and tell them, Get rid of three years experience, five years experience. Someone might come to you and they may have one year experience, but man, they learned a lot that year. I'm mentoring someone from D, the University of Denver, DU, where I did my doctoral work and I'm an alumni and met this gentleman on an alumni uh, fundraising call. And I decided I was going to support their center for oncology, psychology, excellence, because psychology is everything. And psychology of cancer patients is something that's pretty near and dear to my heart right now. 
after what I went through. And as I started mentoring this individual, I realized I've lost my train of thought. Now I'm thinking of cancer. See how fast the brain just other things to worry about. I want to worry. I want to worry. I was actually reading about human nature and it says, according to researchers in psychology who study the evolutionary roots of human decision-making, we have a tendency towards these ways of thinking, pay a lot of attention to irrelevant information, squirrel, being easily influenced by what's happening around us, even when it's not in our best interest. Everybody else is taking a shot, so I'll do it. Everybody else is eating cookies, so I'll do it. Everybody else is sleeping in and begrudgingly starting their day, so I will too. Everyone else is yelling at their kids, so I'll do it too. It happens. Skillfully rationalizing our bad decisions. Anybody great at this one? It's just this one time, right? So the boardroom is our place to be accountable to one another. And when we're accountable, we achieve more. That's what I was telling the young gentleman. He's had one year of internship experience and he feels like he's not enough. And I said, but Cameron, you enjoyed that year and squeezed the juice out of every day. And as a result, because you're performing in that top, pick your percent, I would put him in the top 2%, that because he's chosen to be in the top 2%, he architects his day different. He achieves more. So he ends that one year of experience with four. I loved working at Ping Identity. Every year of my career, I got three to five years of growth. So in my six year time there, I grew about 30 years of experience. That's what I want for you. I don't want you fumbling like I did for seven years to get your business off the ground and going through all the self-doubt all the limiting beliefs, all the reasons why you can't, but everybody else can. I want you to think about Bannister. Bannister broke through barriers of the four minute mile that people, medical professionals, psychologists, human behavioral specialists had said, no one will ever be able to run a four minute mile, but he kept trying. And you know what he did? He broke that barrier. And the minute he did, only months later, many did you are influencing an average of 80,000 people in your lifetime. That's about 2.8 a day, given the average lifespan. So let's do that well. Let's break through barriers holding us back, especially as women. We've had a lot of them, right? But we stand on the shoulders of those who came before us, and we are the shoulders for the next generation. So that's why it's important for me to give you the tools to create everything you need in one place, for you to achieve massive success, right? I want you to have the most amazing 2024 and we're starting January 8th. Every Friday, we'll have a Finish Strong Friday weekly wins call. You will be surprised how motivated you are when you're alongside others sharing their wins and fueling the strategy for how you're gonna maximize the minutes the following week. You'll also get a one-on-one -on -one high performance strategy session with me so that you get a personalized plan for the year ahead. And my favorite, I've studied the greatest of all time and how they spend their days. And so you're going to get how to design the day like a goat training. GOAT stands for greatest of all time for those less familiar. So you can join High Performance Leadership Academy at the founder's rate in one payment of $19.97 or four payments of $625. You can enroll now. Go to doctor, oops, go.drj.com forward slash high dash performance and you can get yourself signed up. You'll get those fast action bonuses if you get signed up by December 15th. And those bonuses will go away as soon as that last free masterclass. If you know this is your time, get signed up now. If you need to learn a little more, I'm going to be launching a free masterclass the week of December 11th. We'll go live for an hour every night at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern. Pick your time zone there. With that, you have two options each and every day when you wake up in the morning. You can choose to slide into the mediocre middle. We all have days like that. I had days during radiation. I remember the day that I subscribed to Netflix. I was so exhausted. My body was being fried. I didn't have it in me to barely even cook dinner for my daughter. So I fell into that mediocre middle and Netflix didn't chill for a little while. That's a season, my friends. It's only a season. It's one photograph. Your life's a movie. 
So option two, pick your percent. Let's commit and claim it now and be the greatest of all time that you were designed to be. You were not designed to conform to the patterns of this world, my friends. You were designed with brilliance within you. And it's your responsibility to explore that uniqueness and figure out how do you position that uniqueness for your next courageous career move? Maybe you want to build the side hustle. Maybe you want to go all in and build your business now. Maybe you're thinking about, could I take my knowledge and create a course? Surely I could. That's a $457.8 billion industry. I'd like a slice of that. Maybe you want to be an author. Maybe you want to be a coach. Maybe you want to be a motivational speaker. Those are all areas that you can do what you love and make great money doing it while having time and financial freedom. But focusing on the what is not where we start. We have to start by focusing on the who so that we position ourselves in the top percent from the beginning instead of struggling from the left side of that bell curve in the throes of business struggles and then into average business success and then into extraordinary, why would you go that hard way? Let's start with the extraordinary, get the playbook in place. I wanna get your high performance playbook in your hands, get you the knowledge and support that you need. So with that, my friends, go out and shine your love and light into the world. I will see you live next week for more training. I hope that you have a wonderful, actually next Thursday is Thanksgiving day. Should we go live? You tell me, if you tell me in the comments that we're going live, we're going live. If you tell me in the comments, we're going to take a break. We'll take a break. We'll decide together. That's how we roll. Because together we are building brilliance. Go out and shine your love and light, brilliant beauties.